Welcome everybody to episode three of Photo Finish. I'm your host, Steve-O. Uh, as previously promised, today's episode is going to be how to read a racing form. Uh, so if you're listening to this on iTunes or any other audio version of the podcast, I would encourage you to go to YouTube, uh, look up Spinnable Sports. That's S-P-I-N-N-A-B-L-E, Sports. Uh, for the video version of this podcast, we're going to have some good stuff in it. I'm going to share my screen, uh, teach you how to read a racing form. Uh, would also encourage you to go to spinablesports.com. There's a lot of good content being pumped out there daily. Some good articles. Going to continue to expand into the uh, sports and, and betting space. I want to encourage you to make that a daily stop as you browse the web. I want to thank everybody for listening to our last episode, which was our Belmont Stakes preview. We had a pretty good showing there. Uh, fortunately for me, Essential Quality, uh, the favorite two to one, I uh, got the win. Uh, so I got edged out there at the Belmont. We still had fun. Uh, that was a great, uh, great day of racing. Uh, I was in a sports book uh, at Caesar's Palace watching uh, racing all day. So it was, it was good. We're going to hop right into it. I'm going to share my screen, and uh, we are going to go over all the basics of how to read racing form. So, uh, as you can see, this is the racing form from Belmont Park. I'm using the daily racing form. Uh, it's a time form version uh, with some speeds. We'll get into that in just a few minutes. I always start, when you're looking at a racing form, uh, every race is going to be uh, laid out the same, uh, as you can see. You've got uh, some identifying information at the top of the form. We're going to go back down to that Belmont uh, Stakes race. And as you can see, the very top of the, the form tells you what kind of race it is, uh, what the purse is, whether it's a grade one, grade two, grade three, graded stakes race. It tells you the, the uh, length of the race. In this case, the Belmont Stakes was uh, ran at one and a half miles. Uh, it will tell you if it's on dirt turf. Uh, these are all uh, good things to look at. It tells you the qualifying information, whether the horse has to be a certain age, whether it's for uh, fillies or mares only, colts or geldings only. All that information will be found at the top of the form. Then you come down here, you get your post time. Uh, in this case, it's 6.49 p.m. Eastern. Uh, the types of wagers available, exacta trifecta, Superfecta, pick three daily doubles, uh, and it tells you the minimum uh, amounts on those wagers. So that's the basic, you know, information about the race. Then you get into uh, information about the horses. And I realized that the first time I looked at a form, uh, I had no idea what I was looking at. It can be intimidating, but it just takes some practice. I would encourage you if you're uh, watching a couple of races. Uh, go online. You can usually find a form available, and I, I would encourage you just to look at it as you're uh, trying to handicap a race. The horses are in order uh, by their numbers, as you can see. One of the first things I look at is who owns the horse, who's riding the horse, and who's training the horse. As you can see, Todd Pletcher was the trainer for Burbonic. Uh, Kendrick Carmouche was the jockey, uh, and Calumet Farm is the owner. As you become more more familiar with the jockeys and the trainers and the owners, you'll kind of get a better idea of who the who to watch for, what kind of connections. Uh, when I say connections, does a trainer like a certain jockey and trainer have good history together? Ownership's another. Godolphin LLC is a huge operation. They pump tons and tons of money into uh, racing in the United States and abroad and uh, paid off with a win here at the Belmont Stakes by Essential Quality. So once you figure out who the jockey is, who the trainer is, you get some background, some more background information here. You have the color of the horse there, when the horse is born, how old the horse is, sire of the horse, uh, who the horse's father was, who the dame was, who the mother of the horse was. Uh, again, as you learn more and more, you know, Tappet here, you can see uh, Tappet is a great sire, produces some fantastic horses. And as you get more and more into racing and, and kind of learn some of these things, 
this information will be helpful to you. So we've got the jockey, as I stated, Kendrick Carmouche was, was on Brabonic, Luis Saez was on Essential Quality, J.R. Velasquez on Ron Bauer. This gives you the numbers behind the jockey is the total starts for uh, that meet at Belmont Park. So Saez had 95 starts, and then he had 13 wins, 18 places, 12 shows, winning percentage of 0.14. You can see Velasquez had a little bit better winning percentage, 0.21. Uh, Flavion Pratt, 0.28, and so on and so on. Flavion Pratt did not have any starts at Belmont. That is his total 2021 numbers as at the time of the running of the Belmont Stakes. Same information can be found for the trainers. Again, that's their, that's Brad Cox's uh, stats at Belmont Park. 15 starts, 5 wins, not bad, uh, 33%. You see his 2021 average was 412 starts, 112 wins, 0.27. Twenty-seven percent there again, still not not a bad percentage at all. So once you take a look at the jockeys, take a look at the trainers, come over here and see the weight of the jockey. So uh, the horse is carrying one hundred twenty-six pounds uh, for the Belmont Stakes. That's going to be uniform across the board. Uh, for some other races, uh, sometimes you can get an apprentice jockey that can carry less weight. Uh, jockeys come in overweight. And that information will be right here on the form. You can see uh, Burbonic's lifetime start. So he had seven starts, three wins, one place, no shows. His lifetime speed figure here is an 89. We'll talk about speed figures in a little bit, but the higher the speed figure, the better the horse, or the, the faster he ran last time out. You'll see essential quality at 100 speed figure for the Kentucky Derby back in May, whereas uh, Burbonic only had an 80 speed figure at the Kentucky Derby, which resulted in a 13th place finish. So you have the horse's lifetime stats, you have the 2021 stats, 2020 stats, and if he's ever ran at this track before, which he did, he broke, uh, Burbonic broke his maiden at uh, Belmont back in 2020 to a sixth place finish. You can see what type of conditions the horse has ran at. Dirt, fast, uh, wet track, synthetic track, turf, and how he did at this distance, which he had never ran at a mile and a half. So those are all valuable pieces of information. Uh, I like to look at the average speed figures. You know, Burbonic had an 89, or excuse me, this their uh, their top speed figure. Central Quality had 100. Uh, Ron Bauer had a 102. So that kind of gives you an indication of what a horse is capable of. Uh, known Agenda, who I liked, had a 94 speed figure. Had a pretty good speed figures at the Kentucky Derby. Just had a kind of a poor start, uh, as you can see there. Another thing to keep in mind, one of the reasons why I was on Known Agenda is I was a big fan of Irad Ortiz Jr. Thursday before the Belmont, uh, Irad took a tumble. Thankfully, it was okay, but he did not ride on Stakes Day. You know, I don't know that uh, would have made a difference. Uh, the horse didn't look like he just had enough, even with uh, Irad's brother Jose taking the mail. But, you know, something to look at. Whereas, you know, you've got a rider like Irad Ortiz Jr. who's winning at a 25% clip at Belmont Park, 27% clip overall for 2021. You know, it may have made a difference. A couple other things to look at. We'll just stay on known agenda right here. I don't see any. You'll see for the eight here. Any, if there are any notes, they'll be right here. So eight overtook, had blunders on. Sometimes you'll see first time LASIK uh, or LASIK of um, medication that can give the horse uh, some horses you know, respond different to it than others. You'll see first-time blinkers if it's the first time the horse has used the blinkers. Or if the blinkers are coming off, if they've used blinkers before, they're not. This go-around, they'll be there as well. So that's the space to look at for any notes uh, or medications. 
want to go over here to the horses ratings. Let's get somebody who's ran a little bit more. You'll see the Tomlinson rating here. So how a horse runs on a particular surface. Generally, on turf, you're looking for a number higher than 320. On anything over uh, 280 is generally considered good. So 320 is very good. It just kind of depends on, you'll see here, Ron Bauer actually ran uh, twice on turf. Had a very good Tomlinson rating of 370. Same with wet surfaces, how he's ran on wet surfaces. Again, such quality, 411. Anything over 320 on wet is considered good. 307 at distance, 319 on turf. So just something to take a look at. I don't get hung up a whole lot on the Tomlinson ratings. That's getting pretty deep into the weeds at that point. So here, I particularly like the time form ratings. They're usually pretty good about nailing where a horse is going to run. So you'll see here for the pace. So is the horse a front runner or a closer? Uh, Burbonic didn't have a whole lot of early speed. Uh, his late speed rating on 107 indicates he's going to be a closer. If you'll come down here, see the horse that we thought was going to be on the early lead was up there. Hot Rod Charlie had a 104 early speed rating. Francisco Diena had a 108. It was up there to start. Didn't do anything. Uh, rocked your world, 110. So I like to look, kind of get an idea of who's going to be on the early lead. Can they keep it? What's their late closing speed? Where have they historically ran? Uh, are they a front runner? Uh, you'll see, you know, Hot Rod Charlie, what he did here at the Kentucky Derby. You got his speed number overall of 100. Uh, started ninth out of 19 horses, sat about fifth place at the Kentucky Derby, and improved third over the last half mile, quarter mile, and finished third. Uh, so that's what those numbers are. Their overall buyer speed figure, where they posted their positions at each each quarter mile marker, and then how they finished. So that gives you an idea of, of how horse ran at the Kentucky Derby. Again, I said, uh, I think Known Agenda, looking at his start, he had the rail at the Derby. He was one out of 19 horses, but had a bad start. First pole, he was uh, 17th, improved a little bit, 16th, 15th, 12th, only got up to 9th. Then you come out here and look, you can see, so again, we're looking at Kentucky Derby. The Kentucky Derby was ran May 4th. May this year, 21, it was the 12th race at Churchill Downs. It was fast, and it was a mile and a quarter. So these are all things to look at. What, what were the conditions? How far, how far was the distance? And you can see that known agenda and, and none of the horses that ran the Belmont had ran a mile and a half before. But known agenda had ran a mile and a fourth, mile and an eighth mile and 16th. Uh, so it ran over a mile, just never a mile and a half. Same thing for the Florida Derby. You can see that it was March 27th of 2021. It's the 14th race at Gulfstream Park. Uh, the conditions were fast. It was ran in a mile and an eighth. Uh, and I read Ortiz was the rider and no agenda uh, won the Florida Derby. That's You can find that there. You come out here and See, you can see the top three horses finish the race, what the price was, and uh, any notes about the race. So, you know, the agenda came three wide uh, at a last turn, quarter pole, first to clear, started drifting out. So, that's according to the people that watch the races for time form. So, that gives you an idea of how a horse performed. You know, if they had a bad run, sometimes you can use these to justify why you think they may come back. If they've had several bad races in a row, then you may have a trend that you want to look at. Uh, let's go back and look at the winner here. Uh, Central Quality, again, very good time form number uh, at the Kentucky Derby, uh, but he finished fourth. And 
we'll, we'll come over here and look and see why did he finish fourth. Well, he got bumped at the start and got pushed wide um, at the towards the finish. So those could be two reasons why he didn't get up either on you know to hit the board or uh, possibly win that race. So you know that was a good indication that uh, essential quality and he was two to one for a reason. It was a very good horse. Uh, you can see Central Quality won the Grade 2 Bluegrass Stakes back at Keeneland in April. Beat Rob Bauer in that one and highly motivated. He won the Southwest Grade 3 Stakes at Oakland Park in February. And then going back to last year, won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, which is a Grade 1. And won the Breeders' Cup Futures grade one in Keeneland in October to qualify for that juvenile race. So, you know, you can see that Central Quality's only loss up until that point was the Kentucky Derby where he had a little bit of a bad start. So, you know, that should have been a good indication that that Central Quality uh, had what it took to get it done at the Belmont, and I certainly thought he did. I was just hoping it'd be the two-to-one favorite, uh, looking for some value. A couple other things to point out. Let's go up here so you can see what type of race it is. You know, a lot of times, let's go to something other than a grade one stakes. Let's go to this turf race here. You can see this uh, turf race was a mile and a quarter. This was the 10th race on the card. Uh, and you can see it was for grade one purse of $750,000. So why does that matter? Because you can see what kind of races uh, that horse previously won, ran, and won. Take, for example, City Man, the one horse here, ran a grade two, finished second. Before that, uh, back in December of 2020, he ran a $100,000 race, $200,000 races, and finished first and then had a non-start when he broke through the gate. Uh, and eased, uh, or excuse me, had a non-finish when he broke through the gate and uh, Jockey pulled him up. But you can see kind of the quality of the races. You know, allowance, uh, $74,000, finished second. And then, you know, he goes from some, you know, $100,000, $74,000 races to a, a $750,000 race. Those are what's called either class drops or class jumps. So if they're dropping down, going from a, say, $145,000 race to a $100,000 race, that's class drop. You got to think that he faced better competition, finished second, going down to a $100,000 race, and then he finished first. So those are all things to look for. Uh, a little bit harder in the case of Belmont, where you have uh, some very good horses who have ran lots of stakes races. You can see grade one race. Uh, grade one is the best. Uh, you have some grade one, grade twos, and grade threes are your best quality races. Uh, you can see Brabant ran at a couple of fifty thousand dollar races before jumping up to running the Wood Memorial at Aqueduct and uh, won that race. MBSP is made special, so it's called when the horse has not ran before or has not won a race before. It's uh, their maiden race, so. Uh, until a horse wins, they can run in these races. The maiden specials are the ones for horses that either have not won or sometimes you'll see have not won more than uh, one or two races. They can put different stipulations on the horses. Uh, and so until they win, they can run in those races. You'll see Burbonic broke his maiden his third time out and then can no longer run in maiden races. Something else I'm looking for has a jockey ridden this horse before. So one of the things I looked at was Ron Bauer, three to one, had a jockey change. Flavion Pratt rode Ron Bauer to a win at the Preakness and then changed mounts to ride uh, Hot Rod Charlie. You know, I, I, something to consider. Flavion Pratt had ridden Hot Rod Charlie at the Kentucky Derby, finished third. Uh, and ultimately, I believe, finished second with uh, 
I run Charlie here at Belmont. So, you know, I look for jockey changes. I look for um, how many times a jockey ridden a particular horse. Essential quality had uh, Luis Saez on him, and uh, Luis Saez had ridden him one, two, three, four, five times before, one, four times with him. Again, another good indication that they should have a favorable result. They did. So these are all things that I look for when I am handicapped in a race. You know, there there is no surefire form or, uh, you know, any one particular thing I look at. I look at a combination of things I just pointed out to you. At the end of the day, you know, you're trying to come up with the most information you can to pick a winner. And sometimes you need luck. Sometimes you could, may see something that nobody else, you know, noticed. You know, I thought at the Preakness where uh, Ron Bauer uh, was a, well, almost a $12 winner, I thought that he had some good closing speed and was one of the few horses in the Preakness that had decent closing speed. Uh, his time form just looking at uh, this race was a 110. I think it was something similar at the Preakness. Ultimately, uh, Ron Bauer had a 102 buyer speed overall and had some good times in the middle of the race there. You know, I took a shot at Ron Bauer uh, hitting the board and it paid off. Of course, we got a, didn't get that good of a price with him here at the Belmont, but uh, because of his Preakness win. But, uh, you know, I got on him because of his closing speed when when there weren't any other, I think there's one other closer in the race uh, that did not have the pedigree uh, that Rombauer had. So that's how I got on Rombauer at the Preakness. You know, Note Agenda uh, here was was my pick to win. I liked uh, I read on him winning the Florida Derby, uh, winning another race at Gulfstream Park prior to that. I, I didn't think he had the best run at the Kentucky Derby. He had a bad position on the rail with 19 horses you know so i thought and he had decent closing speed of 106 knew he wouldn't be on the early lead knew he wouldn't have to worry about uh getting shuffled to the back of the pack of 19 horses there's only eight horses in this race so you know if i read wouldn't have got hurt you know i would like to see what he could have done ty pletcher is a good trainer he's won the belmont several times you know, that's that's how I got a known agenda for the Belmont Stakes. Uh, at the end of the day, though, you know, essential quality was just too too tough. I mean, he was he was the horse to beat. And so, you know, that is the basics of how to read the racing form. You can probably ask any handicappers what they look at. If you ask ten different handicappers, you'll probably get ten different answers. But uh, my hope is that you will be able to go to the track. Pay two dollars for your racing form or whatever it is now. Usually pay about five dollars for them online, and uh, you can use it to help you, you know, find an edge. Look for things that other people may not see. Uh, look for value. Uh, sometimes, you know, you may read the form and say, "Hey, that two to one favorite looks right. Uh, he's just too good. Stay off of him. Put a put a ten dollar win bet on him." You know, it, it's it's this is to help you become a better handicapper. Uh, ultimately, uh, have fun while you're watching races. That's that's my goal, whether win or lose. Obviously, it's more fun when you win, but you know you can spend some time into the form, and the more you do it, uh, the more comfortable you'll get reading the form. So I hope this was helpful. Just looking at the upcoming schedule, uh, some dates to keep an eye on. July 17th, we have the Haskell Stakes, check spinnable sports or anywhere you find your podcast between now and then uh, there may be a brief brief preview for the haskell uh depending on who is going to run just came out that um the Don spirit kentucky derby winner uh, is not going to run hot rod charlie's probable for the haskell midnight bourbon uh who finished second at freakness uh ron bauer who uh had a good showing at belmont is has been invited uh mandaloon who uh won the pegasus and uh 
It's good showing at the uh, Kentucky Derby. Finished second at the Kentucky Derby. Uh, has been invited. I uh, believe that he's going to run. So uh, some decent horses. Uh, may have a preview out for the Haskell. Probably will not cap the full card that day. But we'll at least put out an article uh, with some picks on it. So check spinablesports.com the day of the Haskell. We'll try to get that out, you know, a day or two ahead of the race so you can uh, read my thoughts and, and get my picks on that. Uh, so that is going to be it for this episode. Uh, if there are any major news in the world of racing, bring that to you. We will uh, be back with a episode in a couple of weeks. We'll be looking at the latest news and notes from around the world of horse racing, probably a Haskell, either preview or recap, uh, then we'll look forward to Saratoga getting up and running here soon. Traverse Stakes in August is the uh, major event for Saratoga, which will be towards the end of August, so we will have a preview for that. And really just looking for some good tune-up races for the Breeders' Cup. Uh, Breeders' Cup will be the beginning of November 5th and 6th. It'll be at Del Mar this year out in California. Breeders' Cup is always a good time. Uh, we'll have lots of coverage for Breeders' Cup uh, those two days back in, uh, or later this, this year in November. So keep an eye on things. Uh, go subscribe anywhere you get podcasts. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, SpinnableSports.com is your go-to place for all sports news and notes. Uh, as I stated before, I'll have an article up for the Haskell here in a couple of weeks. So uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. I uh, appreciate you, and we will catch you next time.